be too windy. Can you close the door? Maybe? Live. Live from Kokino, Macedonia, Republic of Northern Macedonia, right? Yes. Just to be clear. So maybe it will be a long video as I want to cook. Uh, of course, we close the door and think you want to come in. Come on, buddy. So we're gonna do pasta carbonara. It is Mel's favorite pasta. What you need simple things onion, four eggs, spaghetti that we got here. Italian spaghetti. The pan, well, the pot for the pasta, we got this one that it's pretty cool. We found in a camping shop in the UK. It's really nice. Boom, here we go. Um, and you need, oh, you know what, we forgot some cheese. We've got Parmesan. We got Parmesan. So, well, this is not the real, and you need bacon. So what we got, yeah, what we got, uh, so yeah, we got eggs, we got these from a local shop, white eggs, very nice. And the Parmesan, I don't know what it is. We got bacon, but do not use this one not sliced bacon use uh, where is the bacon over on the left over on the left oh here so that's the bacon you want to use so you can do like cubes and then the parmesan it's over on the left and here we got Parmesan. Well, it's Ghana Padana, it's different, but it's the same thing. So, yeah, we're gonna need a cutting board. We have this one from our old sponsor, Go Westy, but we never use it properly. <laughs> but we're gonna use it today here so I can cut first the onion. So, I wrote in the title a little bit of chit chat as the other day I post a video that I take off asking you to unsubscribe and I'm sorry for that video but uh, I kind of feel in a dark place right now I would say professionally and I want to explain it a little bit more I'm just I don't know um, maybe different age different mentality and i was raised in a different way <laughs> from young and i find myself like a little bit lost in in our time right now and I'm kind of upset because so we cut the onion first as you can see very very small pieces a little bit lost just because it seems to me that people give away integrity and what was the other word self-respect mm -hmm. yeah they give away they trade it what are you oh sorry i don't know if i can see again the chat uh, I don't think so. I just miss it. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to not cut my fingers. Yeah. So, it seems to me that like, you know, people trade their integrity and self-respect <sighs> for money, for just... And it's really different on the way that I was raised and I was, you know... Uh, the, the way I got into the into what I do and as I mentioned the other day it seems to me that my job as videographer or 
film director or whatever. It was kind of stolen. What are you do? I'm I'm doing a pasta carbonara. So I chit chat. We are in a beautiful place. It's called Coquino. It's uh, on the top of a mountain. It is a uh, astronomic uh, observatory basket. <laughs> I can't read it. It's too small. I'm too old for fish. <laughs> um, yeah, it's beautiful Italian pasta carbonara and chit chat. Uh, how about you step someone? No, no. <laughs> I mean, I did a knife to to cook, guys. I'm not. I'm not that bad person. Uh, so, so we're in Coquino, it's uh, on, what, 1600 meters? It's not really high, but it's a nice place. We're just right on the top, just, uh, do you know I will taste better if you take your shirt off? No, it will not taste better. You just will see my nipples, and yeah, the views will go down, actually. <laughs> not go up. <laughs> Uh, instead, if I put male nipple, take your pants off. No, thank you. <laughs> I will keep my pants on. That's, <coughs> that's actually what I was thinking, that people lose integrity in their life. I mean, we, we, we heard a lot about, you know, privacy, you know, because the social media, they take our things. Well, you were the first one that <laughs> put on social media. And then... And then, yeah, people is ready to do anything. How many people will you tell you? Well, I, sorry, guys, I really can't read. Um, I'm sorry that it's a monologue. I would like to open a chat and to have other people chatting. Um, anyway, yeah, they give integrity and they're ready to do anything in order to get some money in their pockets. It's, it's just ridiculous and, you know... <laughs> We were thinking that not even having a um, a chicken in the van, it's unique because there was already somebody that did it. <laughs> so, so people, it's and you see on YouTube how many people do it stupid things like drinking what was drinking the detergent soap. No, the pods. The pods and these kind of things. I mean, that's that's just stupid. I mean, just don't do it. <laughs> So sometimes it's just to have the five minutes fame, you know, to get viral and... But, I don't know, you get viral because you're an idiot. That's, that's, that's what comes down. And many other people in our community, they will use any kind of weapons, but usually it's uh, female body shapes. You know, in order to get more views and and yeah, I'm kind of upset because I spent time and effort and I did produce my own short movies when I was 20 uh, and I won several prizes and festival, so it's not that I did for my my family to watch them. Um, I did it for an an audience. Um, yeah, and, and my job, it was stolen from people that self-proclaim themselves whatever they want. Because now it's the age of, you know, you want to be a writer, you, you don't need to read, you don't need to, to, you know, write. You just proclaim yourself a writer. Is that correct, Mel? Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, the same thing goes to... Whatever other job, you know, from, from video maker to social media. I mean, social media, it's enough if you have your own Facebook and Instagram and you're a social media manager. <laughs> I saw people online. I remember this girl that she proclaims influencer on Instagram because she has 200 people following. Well, she probably influenced 200 people, not 200,000. I proclaim myself a porno star. That's a good job. I, I think that's that's the job I missed in my life. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, but you have to do some movies, you know. I'm a good director. I can do some movies. <laughs> I have a friend, actually. He used to uh, work as a cameraman in Milano. And he was married with a, with a wife and used to do cameraman for uh, porno movies. And at some point, he started only to do gay porno movies because... Um, just every day watching people having sex I mean like hetero couples he just go back to his wife and he's not really into it so he's just I don't know if he works again in the business that's a business that it's always you know there's always job so I got the onion I will put some nice olive oil in the pan so we Isn't got we got yeah, we got our frying pan, and then I will put the pot with water for the pasta. But first, I want to do the the sauce. A lot of oil I put because this pasta it's it's really greasy, I would say. So yeah, uh, porno it's always a business, but that will never fail. I mean, it's centuries. I remember um, I had some videos that I got from a festival with some porno movies from the uh, probably from the same time as the Lumiere because it was like 19, 19 10, 1915, something like that. So it was the beginning of the century. And they already start to do porno. So yeah, it's a business that goes back centuries. And always work. So yeah, my, sorry. So I put water in the, in a pot. My upsetness was with all the self-proclaimed professional because it's really more difficult to find job online because, you know, I see on the website that I use that it's called Upwork, usually uh, for any job post or maybe even less than five proposal and now even after half an hour that the job is posted, you can see like more than 15. So there's a lot of people and out of the 15, probably 10 or copy paste message. All right, we'll put the water. Uh, so uh, what, what else we need? We need a, a wooden spoon. So I'm gonna put the onion and then I'm gonna show you what I will do with the Eggs. Put the onion to fry a little bit just to give that a golden color. You know. Uh, do we have the lead for the pan? The whip should be on the bottom. Yeah. No, it's already out, sweetie. I put it with everything else. Hello, that's yeah. my wife. Oh, yeah, I got the lead. I put the lead so the water will. A little bit faster. We also have the strainer for the pasta, same things. Okay. Yeah, great. Huh? Uh, okay. I need to chop, chop the bacon, and I will do it right here. That was so nice. Um, there's just a really a small local shops down here in the village, and eggs from the farm so that's the piece of bacon that's not a vegan recipe guys I'm sorry so I gotta chop it in cubes make sure you take out there's some bones here at the end but you can also do in like small strides but make sure you do them a little bit fat So this is a pasta from Italy, especially from central Italy, Roma. 
and it's it's the pasta for poor people, you know, because it's really simple products that they used to have in the farm. I mean, they have eggs from the chicken, they have pigs, so they have the pancetta, the bacon. Oh, this will go to Ziggy, we will be happy. And Mel really love this pasta. She's a carbonara addict. She loves lasagna, but we don't have an oven, so no lasagna in the van. So that's how I cut the. Usually it should be like cubes. Hi from Andalusian. Oh, Andalusian Spain. Hello, Andalusia. How is the really a hot day? It seems more like summer. All right, so I put the bacon inside the pan. All right, that's it. Uh, yeah. And I will wait to, I can show it to you how it looks. It looks like that. Oh, you can put something. Ah. All right, so what else I will do? I will prepare the eggs a bit or the final touch. What I need will be a bowl or a cup. Are there cups down on the bottom? Orange cups? Orange cups. I will need to go at the Okay, I just need a cup. What I do usually, I use four eggs, uh, three entire eggs, and one right. So, one yolk. One yolk. Yolk. So, first egg. Second, third, and now the last one, I have to do it on the garbage so I can take out the white part and just use the red. I'm sure you know how to do this job. <laughs> and here we got the red. Boom, here we go. Then I will put some um, salt. Usually uh, for this kind of pasta I, I, I will not put so much salt in the water because the bacon and uh, the cheese and everything it's really salted. So here I will put just a little bit of salt. Right, then pepper, yes, pepper, black pepper, it goes really well. It's in the bone, oregano, I think. Oh, we got pepper in the oven. So It's recycling. Sorry. Recycling, you see? I will not go smooth on pepper. Yeah. And then I can already put some parmesan and mix everything. This will be just for the ends, you will see. Okay, some cheese. All right. So that's usually how we cook. Well, usually I don't cook. <laughs> I cook only for the cameras. <laughs> so. I can say I'm a big liar <laughs> because usually it's Mel that take care of the kitchen and I would say the grocery. So that's how we now we, we mix all these things and you will see at the end how I'm gonna use it. So we kind of balance that I drive or do all the driving. And I mostly take care of the van, you know, if there's something that needs to be fixed and uh, speaking with the mechanics when we need to speak with mechanics and stuff like that. That was pretty tough 
in 2017 in Greece when we spent three months. Because for is the mechanic, I think that in English you can say probably hello and uh, good morning. <laughs> so all that is was Google Translate. All right, so we have this mix. Uh, I will put as well some olive oil inside. Uh, yeah, I told you this pasta, it's really crazy. There's a lot of sauce. Um, so yeah, going back to the chit chat that I was, it seems to me that people nowadays just, uh, they, they trade, uh, or self-respect, so they have no problem to uh, be pretty much like uh, I call them like YouTube sluts. That's that's what I think they are because they just um, trade the integrity, begging. That's why we don't have Patreon because. Because we don't think it's good. Because why other people should pay my shit? <laughs> I mean, uh, we grow up where if if we want something, we have to work with. I start. I think I start King six or seven. So my mom used to be really great. Um, it's so doing pullovers with wool and as well cotton stuff and I remember we yeah because I was yeah even less than six because we were still living near um, the park in Milano my brother used to go there playing American football uh, and I remember this Saturday okay no fire here this Saturday I used to go with him uh, and I asked my mom to prepare for me some kind of cotton, how you say that, bracelet or, yeah, mm -hmm. kind of bracelet with two colors. And I remember I built with cardboard, like a, a small portable shop. So I have just two pieces of cardboard with a string. So I can just open it and I have display all the... Um, all, all, all my 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 um, stuff goods goods and I used to sell them for a thousand lira each one and we were double colors so my mom used to do like mixing color like I remember the, the best one I think was pink and green it was really nice and you go going with my brother he have his friends my brother it's 11 years older so you know, uh, that sell these things, and I used to sell them. So, and uh, that, that was to you know the money that I need for the breakfast at school. So, that's that's the different that maybe I was raised in a different way where, you know, you you need to work and to do something. You know, the two word money is not just, and many time it wasn't something that you want to do. I work as a Pony Express for, uh, I think it was around uh, about a year. Oh, ciao Paola. Come on. <laughs> so I work as a Pony Express. I doubt that. Anybody want to have a career as a Pony Express? It's a pretty shitty job to be in the streets and if it's raining or sunny or hot or cold, doesn't matter, you just have to be in the streets and deliver. So it's not the best job, but I did it, so I paid part of my tuition. And uh, many other jobs as a barman, I worked several years in a bar in Milano as a barman. Um, I work as a painter, let's say not, uh, uh, not an artistic painter, just, you know, <laughs> white on the walls. <laughs> so, yeah, and that was, that was everything during my um, high school and after that as well in the, when I started the academy, 
because I have to pay for that. It wasn't that expensive like in other places because I think the Academy of Fine Arts in Milano it was about 240 euro per year. So that's pretty nothing compared to some college in the US where when you're 65 you're still paying for that. So um, maybe now the price is a little bit more but still I mean if it was a pretty good deal so yeah a little bit soft about the fact that I spent so much time and effort building a career uh, working with professional that's how I learned how to do this job it wasn't at school I mean I did the fine art school and then Hi guys, got it worth adding. Does the carbonara recipe change by region? Yes, it changed by region depends. Well, it changed by country because you cannot find the real products. For example, here I use bacon, but if you go in Rome and you say, oh yeah, with bacon, they're gonna kill you because it's done with one chale, but it's a, it's a different part of the pig. So I think that, um, yeah, and it should not be with Grana Padano or Parmesan, it should be with Pecorino, but it's uh, really different. Um, it's made, it's a sheep um, cheese and it's more salty, so it's really different. But yeah, so we do what we can, and mainly it's Mel that cook usually. I think that I don't know when was the last time I cooked it, <laughs> it was like a month maybe. I think, I think it's usually once every six months. Once every six months. No, uh, it's a little bit more. Come on, at least once a month. Yeah. I did a salad last month. <laughs> well, but it's the way. It's a balance. It's a balance because Mel, she never drive, and she never take care of the van. Today was funny to see how she cannot pop down. <laughs> I figured it out. She figured it out. <laughs> but yeah. So, yeah, integrity, it's, it's, gosh, it's something that is missing these days. And so my upsetness, it was also sadness about society we're living in. We just give up. I think the most important things we have in life, it's integrity. And we just give it up because, you know, you can make some money out of it. Well, geez. That's sad. That's really sad. Uh, and yeah, it's a generation of self-proclaimed professional because you don't need to show anything. You just need to tell that you're like that. I saw to, yeah, I saw today a friend of mine. He sent me there was a, an interview about a couple from Italy, digital nomads living in a van, a T3. Uh, I'm sorry, just for the picture, they have two hounds dog, and you can say that, I mean, people that have hounds dog usually are posh people, <laughs> I mean, so, people that doesn't even need to work, you know, they set up a fancy website, they sell some shit, and yeah, all the rest, it's mom and daddy. Yeah. So, that, that's how it works, and, um... Yeah, we're not here to, we always try, I would say we're, at least online, we're one of the oldest traveling couple. Well, not really. I mean, let's say from the new generation, because, you know, there's, we, we met many people of it from many years to travel, but, you know, um, internet wasn't there so there was no way to share their travel their pictures yeah, they were and more off the grid like working as they go yeah and more off the grid so but when we start in 2012 and there was no van life no movement no community what we wanted because we were looking for information about how to live in a van <laughs> you know how to manage your life in a small space and there was no information, and now there's a vomit of information every day, and uh, it seems to me old shit every time. The one that really, it's really, 
really make me laugh. It's it's the morning routine, the afternoon routine, the evening routine. Guys, <laughs> I will tell you that if you really live in a van, you don't have a routine. No, you don't. Um, because things change every day. So if the routine is waking up and make sure that you are alive, well, you have the same in an apartment. If your routine is uh, uh, brushing your teeth and drinking coffee, it's nothing different from living in an apartment. I mean, it's the same shit. So, for example, this morning, the routine it was waking up at, it's still, there's still long days because I think the 21, we will change the time one hour ahead. But now the sunset, it comes at thing. So we were awake at 5.30, not even 6 o'clock. Um, yeah, I and wake up. And then was different from the day before and the day before and uh, the day before. It depends. Uh, the two days ago, I was out fishing. That is not my routine. Uh, yesterday, I was start working on the computer because one of my clients is from Canada. So it's in the morning and late in the evening is when we communicate. So, I don't know. It seems really that... People will do anything and will create any sort of drama, any sort of, oh my God, this happened in my life when, you know, it, it's not that incredible. Because anyway, I don't think that, except the space, there's not so much different by living in a van. The only things that I had yesterday, and I told Mel, I say, I would like to go home. So, the problem is that we don't have a home. So, the problem I was facing yesterday with myself is being not, you know, having, losing your security on, you know, the, the job that you, you give everything to it and you have the passion for. Because at some point, it doesn't matter the quality, it doesn't matter how good you do things. Because we live in a society where numbers are the now the measurements. Uh, if you're good, you have numbers. If you're not good, you don't have numbers. So that's that's how people measure right now if you're good or not. Less and less people look for quality. Um, I saw a video yesterday made from. Uh, Let's say a fellow camper van guy in Italy, and it was like a, a short advert for a restaurant. Seriously, it's it's uh, probably more of you guys will do a better videos, and probably get he, he was paid to do that. And it's pity to see that people with no experience get paid, and the client thinks that that's a good job because it's a good video when. It's not a good video. But the thing is, he get more views than my vlogs. So that means at the end, doesn't matter if it's good or not. Doesn't matter if I have, I spent money to buy an expensive drone, expensive lenses, expensive everything. And if I uh, take a full day in order to edit something, because you know, it's it's about numbers, and oh, this makes a weird sound. All right, so I think I can stop now. You can see here it's the bacon; it's uh, swimming in oil, and I'm gonna swap these. I'm gonna do that, right. and I'm gonna stop these. So I will let the uh, oil and the bacon rest a little bit. Then what we need to do, it will be to cook the pasta and then this kind of sauce that I did with the eggs, cheese, um, salt and pepper, it will go just at the end with the oil. So the, the thing is, it will be the eggs that kind of 
melt with the hot pasta and we'll create the sauce that will keep together um, the, the, the pasta like in the sauce. You can do a, oh, it's not a vegan one, it will be a vegetarian one with zucchini, for example. Instead, you put onions, oil, zucchini. Uh, if you want the vegan, you will not add the cheese. And the eggs. And the eggs, yeah. So, yes. yeah, no vegan. <laughs> No vegan. <laughs> Only vegetarian. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> you want to see me do some yoga poses <laughs> while I'm cooking? <laughs> that will work a lot. So yeah, I, I really hope to to get out from these black hole where I am. It's not really easy because. I thought that it, it's about, maybe it's about all the online thing uh, that um, I wasn't raised with and uh, I found it really depressing. That's why last year I got up from Facebook because I wasn't interested and uh, it seems more and more that it's, it's not my thing. Um, I not used to um, I was kind of forced I think we were kind of forced to be used to you know and everything happened so fast in the last 10 years I would say mm. I mean we had to adapt we have to adapt uh, probably as we're older <clears throat> uh, it took more time for us to adapt to when maybe to a uh, um, Millennials that, or or even newer generation, they, they they just born with a task because we saw children with tablets and cell phones and these kind of things. So, I thought that maybe the best solution will be to buy a piece of land uh, we love Sicily, and that will be the place eventually, um, and just totally get off grade because you know maybe do some jobs as I still have for my clients but uh, I don't know something more easy have a few animals you know some pecan some sheep a pig <laughs> once a year <laughs> and then a new one uh, have a garden I don't know but it, at the same time I still like to travel I mean it's the thing is, I lost interest in doing vlogs, um, so I'm not shooting anymore as I shoot, for example, last year in, in Ireland, in Scotland. I pretty much do. Uh, today, we, yeah, I did some shooting with the drone on this place because it's really beautiful from the top and took some photos, but. Um, yeah, I just I just lost that interest, and um, I would say part of it, I think, was the frustration of seeing, you know, spending time first to do the technology is a blessing, and of course, it, yeah, it's a blessing, but also it's 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 a feast in your ass, <laughs> I would say, uh, because when technology wasn't available. You still have only few professionals that know how to use technology and know how to, you know, read the lights and you know take good pictures. And, and now you don't need. I mean, uh, it's you yeah. Know, you don't need any skill because even if you don't have, you can find a tutorial on YouTube. And here we go. Uh, all right, I think it's almost boiling here, so I will put just a little bit of salt because already the sauce and here the eggs are already salted. So, just half of what I put, not a That's it. Well, you can see it's too hot. All right, and now we wait just a little bit to boil again, and we put the spaghetto uh, last week I think well yes I cook last week I was doing a pasta with pesto it is not that difficult you just buy the pesto <laughs> but we use some Greek spaghetti 
guys, my advice, don't use Greek spaghetti. I'm sorry, they can do amazing cheese, they can do amazing moussaka and tzatziki, whatever, but spaghetti, just try to buy Italian or, yeah, these are Italian. It's a big class, it's not Barilla, it's not the... Hi, uh, we are doing this video <laughs> thanks to Spaghetti Combino. <laughs> Because the Greek one, they really stick to each other. I mean, they, they, I mean, you, you just finish to cook them and you just put your fork and all the spaghetti comes in once. So what we did, we cook and we throw the pasta away because it was really not possible to eat it. So at least, I mean, these are from Lidl. We used to buy things at Lidl, by the way. <laughs> that pay our travel. Ah. So a good way to open the spaghetti, that's the way. <laughs> and here we go. It's important for the spaghetti, the first minutes you have to try to push the spaghetti inside the pot so they will start cook homogenically, homogenically, homo sapiens. Naturally? Naturally, yes. Well, I mean, uh, not just from one side, I would say. So, as soon as they become a little bit softer, uh, we can use these ones. So here we are, seven years inside a van, and nobody gives a shit about us. <laughs> because I don't have a six pack <laughs> on my belly. <laughs> and because we're not Trastafarians, because we don't have a sprinter. <laughs> Thank God we don't have a sprint. <laughs> Thank God we have a VW, guys. And the best failure. And I can tell you, because every time when people ask, so how much you pay the van? And we say, well, 6,000 euro. People just go like, oh my God. I mean, that was still that time where these vans were not expensive and we were lucky. Probably because now I see the prices of the same kind of van with the same kilometers on it. Guys, it's at least double the price. So, yeah, and we love our van. It's our home. Yeah, and yesterday the probably is talking to Mel, saying, like, I would like to go home, but what is home? Sometimes I would say, yeah, we always say home is where you park it, so whatever. <sighs> Maybe I'm just a little bit tired. I don't know. We usually have this once a year. Different yeah, times. different times, homesick, but again, the problem is that this is our home. You cannot define a country as home. I mean, I will not feel better if I go back to Italy, because where to go anywhere. Uh, so sometimes it's, uh, I would say it's not easy to be a nomad, to... It gives you a lot of freedom, yes. Um, but, and yes, I would say that without this lifestyle, we couldn't be able to see many places we saw in the last seven years. And have the opportunity to, to be here. I mean, oh, let me show you where, where we are. Just to show you that we're not just in a Walmart parking. <laughs> So, if we open right here, so that's, that's Coquino, that's the top, that's the uh, Observatory, uh, it's a really beautiful place, as you can see there's a beautiful view of Macedonia from the top, sorry, Republic of Northern Macedonia, because somebody can get upset. If we call Macedonia, so I can 
Uh, it's not any easy things. Alright. Uh, okay. Good. So yeah, I would say it's give you a lot of freedom, but at the same time it's um, it can be stressful and maybe it's the you know if you do it time to time you know you travel three months and then you go back home and you have your kind of normal life maybe it works better but doing that full time and for a long time I don't know it's it's tough and some sometimes um, it's just wandering and without any more well we have some goals but you know you cannot just go back home except the, the place where you park that's that's the reality uh, but it is what it is and anyway we we Pretty much we we did the choice when we start to have a, a blog that Mel started to write and was uh, in the beginning it was more to say hi to friends and family and then we saw that not only friends and family which country usually stay um, <laughs> U Europe <laughs> let's say uh, we just stay because of some documents two and a half months in Bulgaria now we're in Macedonia Republic of Northern Macedonia uh, it's not a big country here so we're here for what a week maybe uh, we're gonna travel maybe for the next couple of weeks then we will go to Albania uh, then we will go to Chernogorod it's Montenegro and maybe Croatia so we'll see it's uh, it depends um, country and how many things we want to visit so we try to highlight the, the best that each country has to offer and sometimes we need as, as as in Bulgaria for example we have to be there because of the documents and it took some times in order to renew the documents uh, I would say for now we we like to travel in Europe pretty much all Europe these are the last country that we need to explore a little bit before I think we're like what 26 countries so far 25, 25. <clears throat> and usually at least we stay at least a couple months you know depends it depends, de on the size. depends on the size of the country depends on the season depends on finances uh, finances you know uh, it's slow travel though. Slow travel because, uh, yeah, like we maybe move like 20 kilometers. Well, today we move 60 because we want to come up here to visit this place. Uh, yeah. So let me roll a cigarette. And then I'm, I'm almost up. Yeah, you saw my filters. I love that smell of filters. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this is the what well, I can call the real van line, and um, the one that has the easy job it's Ziggy because he travel, he get food, he get water, he go into amazing places. Nobody ever asks his passport, <laughs> but we spend money to do it. So you get the best out of it, and he's always free because we used to park in places like these where you can just wander around for free and um, have no problem. So yeah. Anyway, we we have the I would say all these years the integrity of not falling into that circle of you know giving up your integrity because you know somebody give you money on the other side uh, i think uh integrity it's too expensive to trade it uh at least for us and um and i saw some example of you know i don't want to be 
push to fill my videos with hi guys and uh, welcome to this video but it's sponsored by who and who or hi guys just remember to check our uh, patreon account because you know we don't make so much from YouTube so it's better if you just give some extra money there well yeah uh, it's it's I found it really boring and I find it really not necessary um, even if we had some moments where uh, financially we're in, but still we kept our integrity and our self-respect of not start to playing all the tricks that even old friends we see that they started to rebuild maybe is not a huge number but it's really good people and it's a strong community uh, some of them we've met them uh, in real life not just online so we're pretty happy about it uh, but we're not selling machines we're not I mean we did some t-shirts but I think I never even did a video promoting our t-shirt but it's kind of, well, you know, well, if you want to buy it, you, you can see on our website, there's a page and you can buy one. <laughs> but, you know, I don't want to force people to, 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 to just be part of that promotional things. Uh, we're not performers. I mean, we're just simple people just trying to live a simple life and share what we know about. Let's try the spaghetto. So al dente, mm, that's good. Al dente means that the inside it should be a little bit white, just with a little bit. But my wife doesn't like al dente; she likes well cooked. Mm. So compromise somewhere in between. Yeah, still a minute, and then I will show what will happen with the sauce. Anyway, we're we're mostly happy because we still have our freedom, our integrity, our choice, and it's uh, yeah, it was a choice to live this way, and it's still a choice. It's not a, something that we were forced to. So we're lucky to have what we have. So I, I can really complain about it. We got way to get food on the table every day. And good food, as you can see. So. Uh, Ziggy. It was funny this morning. He saw a squirrel <laughs> in the other place. Yeah, the last two days we visit rocks because yesterday we were <laughs> in another place called uh, Kuklitschki. It's like uh, stone dolls. Um, it's like it's a called the marriage party. The marriage party because there's these natural rocks formation. It seems a couple and um, wedding guests. a wedding. Yeah, so I think the pasta is good. So I will go outside to dump the pasta in this which is really cool and i will put on the fire back the pan with the oil and the chip that will be back in a bit Pasta is ready, it's here. So what I will do, I will start again the content of the pan. Fry it a little bit. And then I put the pasta. 
right inside the pan. That's something I suggest for any kind of pasta I really like. Mel, she like a different way. She do the pasta and then she add the sauce in the plate. I like to put everything inside the pan. So we will take all the mm, sauce. Okay. So we add these. <coughs> I can put just a little bit of oil. <coughs> So I mix a little bit so the pasta gets all the oil and the bacon. And then we start bit by bit to put a little bit of these, the eggs and the Parmesan, pepper and oil, and we start to mix a little bit more, put a little bit more. So it's something that you use just at the end. So that the, the, the eggs will cook around the pasta because the pasta is hot and then it's on the fire. So it will create this kind of soft that will keep the pasta together with the cheese as well. And usually, yeah, I put three entire eggs and one red. So that's the way I do it. And we... All right. And put as soon... Many of YouTubers watch it on daily as you say, okay, it was a long message, but I understood. <laughs> Put some water right when you finish with the eggs, because cleaning that after, when it dries, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> All right, so we're still mixing. And now the pasta becomes a lot yellow, yellowish. <laughs> Very good. Spaghetti carbonara. All right, I think we're good. We can add just at the top a little bit of, well, I will do in the plates maybe. Do we have plates or bowls? Plates. Plates. I will do the plating. <laughs> These are really cool plates, bamboo style. That's really good. So. so a little bit of pasta, and then we go to reach the bacon. Adam Ramsey <laughs> And then I'm add just some extra cheese on top. Just a little bit. Here we go. And as my wife love it, some extra pepper. Alright. And that's what you got. It's good, huh? Maybe. Let me see. If it's not working. Hold on. It's not so much light. But that's the carbonara van life style. All right, guys. I think we're gonna have our dinner now. 
is was a pleasure to be with you you to be with us and me having a monologue pretty much because i'm the age but uh thank you for watching and so hi guys how you doing uh and yeah have a nice dinner here too guys have a nice week it's monday so yeah will be great see you another time